Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Last time we used ChatGPT to try to make a performance-based question. Now we're gonna to try to do the same thing, but we're gonna try and have ChatGPT make a study guide. I wanna see if ChatGPT is giving accurate information, so let's try it out. Uh, I think a lot of people use ChatGPT, so I think this would be good. Give me a CompTIA security plus study guide. I know a lot of my students will use ChatGPT to ask questions. And I really don't recommend it because a lot of times what happens is you'll ask a question, ChatGPT will give you an answer. Some, a lot of times the answer is gonna be way longer than what you really need to be studying. And you'll end up going down rabbit holes where you're learning about information that is unnecessary for the test. You waste a lot of time there. So let's see, I'm taking a look at this. So we have an overview here. Let me see if I can move my head there okay so all right we have a general security concepts CIA triad okay that's fine that's okay it's missing a couple threat actors graphic ideas and this is one thing ChatGPT will do you doing it'll, it'll give you graphic ideas but it won't actually write out the graphics because that takes a lot more computation power all right so domain two malware types Okay, social engineering, phishing, spear phishing, vishing, it's missing some, buffer overflow, cross-site scripting, SQL, injection, zero day attacks, vulnerability scanners, penetration testing, this really doesn't tell us too much. DMZ's VLAN segmentation, okay, IPS, and then proxies, VPN tunneling protocols, SEM, forensics, basics, doesn't really tell us preparation identification came eradication recovery lessons learned okay so it does tell the steps here bcp drp business continuity planning disaster recovery planning and then gdpr hipaa ccpa grc okay let's see I w i'm curious because i want to calculate these 48 percent. so that's 20 plus 28 percent plus 18 percent so that's uh 66%, 88%, and 100%. Okay, now does that match? Let's see. Twenty, twenty-eight, eighteen, twenty-two, twelve. It looks like it matches. Okay, so it gave us topics that could be on here, but this is, so far we've done this for a few minutes and we've got nothing that's better than the exam objectives provided to you by CompTIA. CompTIA's exam objectives will list out all of these topics in much more detail. And what I recommend, honestly, when you're trying to get ready for your test, after you've done a lot of your studying, you take a look at the exam objectives and you see if you can explain each of these terms to another person or to something else. Try and teach these terms to something. Uh, teach them to your, your significant other, your, a family member, uh, your pet a plant, whatever it is, it's gonna engage your brain to try and explain the topic. That's gonna help you understand the topic a little better because you might say, okay, well, if I take a look at this, I know what a hardware security module is. You could say that to yourself or you can try and explain what a hardware security module is to somebody who doesn't know. And that takes a higher level of understanding to be able to explain that. So, so far, this study guide has really let us down here Let's ask it to draw the graphics you suggested. Let's see if it'll draw anything. It usually takes a while to do that. So, so far this has been pretty useless. It's given us some you know, little emojis, but I really haven't seen anything too good here. Okay, now it's gonna draw something. And honestly, I think you'll find this with a lot of the AI tools, using AI tools to study is really a waste of time uh, because you're just going to get, you're gonna have to prompt it for the information. It's not gonna present it in a organized fashion. Remember these AI tools are trying to copy what's already out there. So it's much better to just get something that's presented to you as you should be studying. It's designed to learn, not whatever chat GPT comes up with based on your prompt. So of course this is taking a little bit of time. It is gonna give us a graphic. And 
the nice thing with the CompT exam objectives, if you're using this to help with your studies, I'm not saying this is the best thing to use on its, you can't just use this on its own. I definitely don't recommend looking through the exam objectives and then like Googling or using ChatGPT to check out each term. You're gonna waste a lot of time doing that. Uh, but it, a good thing is at the end, if you have trouble with your acronyms, you definitely take a look at the acronym list here. These are the acronyms you'll see on the test. These are all gonna be in the test bank and they explain, they list out each of these acronyms or what they stand for. Acronyms and abbreviations, because not all these are acronyms. Difference being an acronym, you can say it like a word, uh, while an abbreviation like DHCP is not a word, okay? Uh, but CAPTCHA would be an acronym because you can, it's a, it's a word that you can say, CAPTCHA. Uh, kind of, sorry I picked CAPTCHA because it's probably the least, or MAC, MAC would be a good one. HIPS, HIPS would be a good one, HIDS, uh, something, you know, I didn't want to say CAPTCHA because CAPTCHA is super annoying. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, we have confidentiality, availability, and availability, <laughs> and together they form CIA which that's pretty funny. Script goodies or notices, that's true. Uh, insiders or incidents malicious. Okay, now this isn't true at all because insiders can be unintentionally, they don't have to be malicious, they can also unintentionally cause incidents or cause uh, problems. So it doesn't have to be a uh, malicious intent with an insider. Nation states are sponsored by Gov. That's true. That's, I think anybody can figure that one out. Hacktivists are politically motivated. Okay, so that's true. So this does kind of explain this a little bit. Phishing, spear phishing, vishing, and pretexting. I'm not sure. I guess vishing being a phone, and but pretexting is not just text. So I don't understand what this graphic is trying to tell us. The only thing we're getting here is that vishing is a phone, and I guess they're trying to make this like a target for spear phishing. You're targeting a per certain person. I guess that makes sense. And then a tag chain, we have initial access, <laughs> something, and then exfiltration. This reminds me of that South Park, the underwear gnomes. You guys, has anybody seen the underwear gnomes where they go, steal underwear, profit. <laughs> that's exactly what this is. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so if you're looking for a laugh, uh, you definitely want to use ChatGPT to make yourself a study guide. <laughs> but yeah, that's a uh, that's a good one. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna screen capture that one and, and use that. Oh, geez, I really like that. As that uh, that's funny. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I'm saving that one. All right. Um. So I think we could safely say that using ChatGPT to help your studies is just not gonna not gonna be a good use of your time. You wanna have a course where you wanna have study material that's been designed, tailored to help you understand the material. If you are looking for a good course, check out our classes on cybercrafttraining.com. We have practice tests, we have my video course. They're all videos that I personally produce. So if you like my videos here on YouTube, go check out my video course. I also have performance-based questions in there. Uh, we have the official CompTIA materials with our self-paced course. If you're looking to get this CompTIA official labs, PBQs, practice tests, and study guides, that's all there. It's the best way to get the certification. Uh, but again, if you're trying to use ChatGPT to do studying, I really don't recommend it. Honestly, I don't even recommend it to search for certain terms. You're going to get down different rabbit holes. You know, so like if we take a look at um, – Sometimes this can be helpful, but you're gonna get too much information. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If we take a look at elliptic curve cryptography, what is elliptic curve cryptography? Let's just see what ChatGPT tells us about it. Uh, based on mathematics, elliptic curves over finite fields used to create faster, smaller, more efficient cryptography keys. Offer same level security as RSA with smaller key sizes. A 256 ECB key is is it trying to say that this is comparable to a 3072 bit RSA key? Because it's not the same for sure. The, the more bits you have in the key, the better it's going to be. So this is misleading. It's telling you wrong information. It's ideal for, okay, now this is true. It's ideal for mobile devices and Internet of Things. Um, but, okay, ECC, just so you guys know, is, is basically used to plot 
And if you go through my videos, I'll explain this to you very quickly. But an elliptic curve, if you take a look, is if we have a graph, an elliptic curve will look like this. So what the elliptic curve cartography does, it just takes two points on that elliptic curve and it plots those two points and then it uses that for the mathematical uh, background information to come up with the key. So there's different mathematical ways to come up with a key. Elliptic curve cryptography uses an elliptic curve, which looks like this, this hump type thing. And that's pretty much it. And it's really good for low power devices, internet of things devices, devices that don't have a lot of, you know, they don't have a lot of power. You know, they, they run off a of battery or they don't have a lot of processing power. But this right here is misleading because it's not a smaller bit size key is not going to be the same as a larger bit size key. And an RSA key is incredibly strong. So th this is not, not correct. But yeah, again, don't use chat GPT for your study guides. I won't even use it to ask basic questions. It's not going to help. It's going to make you, it's going to give you bad information and you're just going to end up confused when you get these questions on the test. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'm not trying to, I, I just want to make sure you guys are passing your certifications and you're using your time wisely. Okay. You can, you don't want to be spending your time in the wrong material. That's going to waste your time. It's going to make it harder for you to pass your exam. Learning it incorrectly is way harder for you than learning it right the first time. If you learn it right the first time, you'll know it. But if you try and learn with bad materials, you're going to learn it incorrectly. And then it's very difficult to unlearn that. So hope that helped. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Thanks so much and have a great day.